push notifications are a great way to keep your users engaged, and you can send them directly through your Progressive Web App on almost all major browsers now. In today's video, you'll learn how to set up Firebase cloud messaging for the web from scratch, and we'll do it in an Ionic 4 Progressive Web App. The reason I chose this topic is because Angular Fire 2 has now become Angular Fire, and it lives under the at Angular namespace. It's now a stable release with support for messaging and callable functions, which you'll learn all about in this video. If you're new, like and subscribe, and for this video I'm giving away a one-of-a-kind Ionic Fire t-shirt. All you have to do is leave a comment below, and I'll pick a random winner by Friday. So today we're talking about web push notifications, which differ from notifications on native installed apps like iOS and Android. Web notifications work in all major browsers, and will feel just like regular push notifications on Android devices. The big holdout is iOS Safari, so you won't be able to send web notifications to iPhone users. In my upcoming full course, I'll show you how to set up native iOS notifications for an installed iPhone app, but the lesson today strictly focuses on web notifications. Let's start by taking a look at what we're building and how it actually works under the hood. The first thing that happens is the user grants permission to this app to send notifications. When that happens, Firebase will give us a token that we can send messages to. We could use that token to send a notification to an individual user, or we can subscribe our users to a specific topic and broadcast notifications out to everybody at the same time. There are use cases for both, but sending topic-based notifications tends to be a little more complicated, so that's what I'm going to show you how to set up today. We'll use callable functions so that we can trigger a cloud function directly from our front end by clicking a button that will subscribe the user to a topic or unsubscribe them from a topic. And lastly, we'll set up a Firestore cloud function that will actually broadcast out the messages every time a new document is created in the database. To get started, you'll need to have an existing project, and you'll run Firebase init functions to initialize your backend. I'm using Ionic 4, but you could write this code in any progressive web app. So I've created a file here called fcm that's specifically for my messaging cloud functions. And these cloud functions are some of the easiest functions that you'll ever write. We are going to use callable functions, which are just like HTTP functions, except that we can pass in information directly from the Firebase SDK. So they're much easier to work with from your front-end UI, as we'll see here when we get into the front-end code. When you trigger an on-call function, it gives you access to a data object, which contains any custom data that you want to pass in through your front-end. So in our case, we want to subscribe the user to a messaging topic. So we'll send this function the token or the browser that the user is granted permission to, and then also the topic that they want to subscribe to. So we can subscribe a user to topic-based notifications with this easy one-liner of admin messaging, subscribe to topic, with the token and the topic as arguments. Then to handle unsubscribing, we can just repeat this same pattern, but instead of calling messaging subscribe to topic, we call unsubscribe from topic. Firebase will keep track of all the tokens subscribed to a topic and then broadcast out push notifications to them simultaneously. So it's a really easy way to broadcast out notifications to millions of devices simultaneously. The last thing we need to do on the back end is create an event that will send out a message to the subscribers to a topic. For this demo, I'm pretending that we have a discounts collection, and every time a new discount document is added, it will broadcast a notification to all the users. For that, we can use the Firestore document on create trigger, and the first thing we'll do is set up a variable for the document data, which we'll use to format the notification content. Then just to show you the end of this function, the last thing we'll do is call admin messaging send with a notification payload. Formatting the notification payload is where you're going to be doing most of the work. As I mentioned earlier, iOS, Android, and the web all have different notification APIs, and the main thing that they share in common is the title and body. I'm going to create a notification object that we can share on all platforms, and then I'll customize things for the web from there. And I highly recommend that you strong type these because you'll definitely want VS Code IntelliSense when formatting these messages. At a bare minimum, the payload needs to have the notification content as well as the topic that you're sending to. And you could actually stop here and just have a basic notification, but we want to customize things a little bit more for the web. I want my notification to have a custom icon, I want it to vibrate in a certain way, and I want it to have multiple options with emojis that the user can click. So we can do this by setting up a web push object, which will have the parameters that follow the web push notification API. We can pass in an array of numbers to have the notification vibrate with a specific pattern. We can pass in a URL for the icon, and we can even pass in an array of actions so the user can do different things based on a button that they click specifically on the notification itself. There are even more options than that, but I think that's good enough for now. The next thing we'll do is deploy our functions, then we'll get into our front-end Angular Ionic 4 code. 
So you should have functions that look like this on the Firebase console, and you'll want to make a note of the names of the callable functions because we'll need them in the front end code. Web push notifications are made possible by a service worker that sits in the background of your progressive web app and listens for messages. To create the worker, all you have to do is go into the source directory, create a file called Firebase messaging sw.js, and then you can copy and paste this code, which is directly from the Firebase docs. The only thing you're required to change is the sender ID for your specific Firebase project. Then with an Ionic Angular project, you'll need to go into the Angular JSON file, and you'll need to add the path to this file to the assets array. This tells Angular to include this file in your production build. The next thing we'll wanna do is make sure that we have Angular Fire installed in our project. You can follow the official install instructions in the main repo. Then the next thing I'm doing is generating a service in my app called FCM. This will handle pretty much all of our front end code, including getting permission from the user, showing the notification while the app is active, and subscribing to specific topics. I'm working from an existing app with additional services, but you don't have to worry about those. In this service, we'll be using Angular Fire Messaging, Angular Fire Functions, and Ionix Toast Controller. Now, currently there's a bug with Angular Fire Messaging, which might already be fixed by the time you're watching it, but if not, this is some code you can use to fix it. I'll add a link to the GitHub issue in the description. The first thing we'll do is set up a token as a property on the service, then we can inject our dependencies in the constructor. When a message is sent with the app running in the foreground, we're not going to send the notification to the device, but we'll just handle it directly in the app. We can do that really easily out of the box with Ionix Toast Controller. So I'll create an async function here called make toast. Then we just call the toast controller create and add whatever parameters we want on that toast message. This will give us a toast message at the top of the screen that fades out after five seconds and has the option to dismiss. The next thing we need to do is get permission from the user. You can run this method when your app is first initialized, or you can run it on a button click. But basically, it's just going to bring up this pop-up window asking the user to grant permission to your app to send notifications. Angular Fire Messaging has a method called request token that returns an observable. And when we subscribe to it, I'm going to set the token as a property on this service. So we can use it later with our callable functions. The other thing we want to do is listen to the stream of incoming messages and then handle them accordingly in our front end. We've already set up a method to show a toast message, so we'll go ahead and make use of that. We'll pipe in the tap operator, then take the notification body, and use that as the content for the toast message. So every time Firebase broadcasts out a new message, it will be handled by Ionix Toast Controller in the UI. Then the last piece of the puzzle is to create a couple of methods to call our callable functions. And this is actually almost as easy as writing the function itself. We can say Angular Fire Functions, HTTPS callable, and then the function name. If you remember, subscribe to topic is the function name that we've already deployed to our backend. And then we can pass in the topic and also the token that we have set up for this device. This also returns an observable. So I'm going to again make use of our make toast method to show a toast message once this request has completed. Then we'll do the exact same thing to unsubscribe from a topic, but just calling a different function. So that handles all the complicated stuff. Now we just need to go into a page, inject our service, and put it to use. For this demo, which is part of my Ionic full course, we have an FCM page. Then I also have a database service, which will create a document in Firestore in the discounts collection, triggering a message to be sent to all subscribers to that topic. But that code's not very important, it's just a simple Firestore document write. And the way I have it set up for this demo is that it will create a random discount percentage. Then if you remember from our function, it's looking for a headline property on the document to format the content for the push notification. So this way we'll get a different random number for every notification so we can verify that everything's working as intended. Now we can just call our FCM methods directly on Ionic buttons. So we have three different buttons set up in here, one to request permission, one to subscribe to a topic, and then one to broadcast the message. When we open the app and click the grant permission button, it will have the pop-up giving us the option to allow or block notifications. Then I'm displaying the token in the UI, which is just a big long string. Then I'll click subscribe to topic to call our callable function, and that will bring up a toast letting us know that we're now subscribed to the discounts topic. And lastly, I will send the notification by creating a document in Firestore, which then triggers the cloud function to send the message. When the app is in the foreground like it is now, it will just show the Ionic toast message. 
but when it happens with the app in the background, it will trigger the notification on the browser itself or on your phone if you're running Android. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you wanna learn how to set up notifications on iOS and Android, I'd recommend upgrading to a pro membership to get access to my full Ionic course, which covers native features and a little more detail. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.